talked about these Yamanaka factors, these four genes that he won the Nobel Prize, and you've taken three of those genes and identified that these three can, in this case, repair a nerve, an optic nerve, which is fascinating to the idea that maybe we could help um, you know, people see again or use it for other nerve-related diseases. So my question is two things. One, why those three? How did you decide that the fourth one didn't make sense? And two, you said you're delivering these genes by a virus. Well, today we're all surrounded in this world where virus is bad, but you're using it for good. So can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Three, the four genes, um, so the MYC, the M one at the end, uh, it's been known for 50 years to be a cancer-causing gene. So it didn't take a genius to leave it out. But the question was, would it still work? And would it be safe to put in three embryonic genes? And that, that's part of the revelation that we, we've come to, which is that it's, it, you don't need that MYC for it to work. In fact, it works better without it for age reversal. And I think that's in part because you don't want to push the system too far, right? You just want to push it back halfway. Go too far, it could be bad. And so without the MYC, it goes back to being young, but there's a barrier. It doesn't seem to go further unless you put MYC in. So we've locked out there, so we left off Mick. Um, and then when we put it into mice, not just the eye, but the whole body we've now put in, um, this virus into, uh, we see for a year of turning these genes on, there's no downside. We see a trend towards even less cancer. And we're looking forward over the next five years or so to test uh, what these genes are capable of. Um, and the virus issue, uh, so right now there are FDA approved viruses that are domesticated. The ones that are approved are called AAV, which means adeno associated viruses. And they're very safe for use in humans. They're not uh, dangerous. And, you know, they've had all the bad genes taken out of them, but they do infect nerve cells and other cells in the body. And so for instance, a company called Spark Therapeutics, some people may have heard of Spark. They were the first to get a FDA approval to use AAV delivery of genes to restore vision in the optic nerve. And we're just riding on their coattails, standing on their shoulders, using those same technologies that are already FDA approved to deliver the genes. But ultimately, we don't wanna just have to use gene therapy. My colleagues and I, including uh, the Belmonte lab that I mentioned at Salk Institute, we're rushing as fast as we can to find simpler ways to reprogram the body so that it could be a pill, could be a cream. We don't know, but we think that uh, the sky's the limit and it could become you know, just a, a simple pill that you take after 50 that keeps you younger for longer. So would that pill be like the proteins that the genes might normally be expressing or producing? Good question. So the, the big question that I wanna solve um, or hopefully someone else can solve, but we, we need to figure this out for humanity is how does the cell know what was 50 years ago in humans or in the mouse two years ago, there's a storage of information there that we don't fully understand. We call it the observer, which is an old fashioned term for a backup hard drive of the system, but it exists. We know how to tap it in, tap into it, but we don't know where that is. Now we do know some of the clockwork. We do know that when these genes are switched on, these three genes, you need enzymes that remove those chemicals, the methyls, denomethylation. Because when we delete those uh, or knock them down in the eye, you don't restore vision. So we're starting to see how this thing works, but we have a lot more work to figure out the whole system. Right now, you know, it's more like magic. You throw them in and it works. But I think very soon in the future, I think a lot of people are going to try to figure this out. And when we get an idea of how it's possible that the cell knows that these 50,000 should be tweaked up and then these other thousand go down, don't touch these other ones. Once we understand that and who's involved, then we'll have a much easier time of making medicines that can do this um, instead of gene therapy. And the other thing I thought was really interesting is that you were using an antibiotic to activate the virus. Again, one of those things that people don't think go together. Antibiotics have nothing to do with viruses. They're about bacteria. How does it activate the virus? Yeah. Well, in biology these days, you can do anything, right? Uh, and you're only limited by your imagination. We, we do experiments in my lab that would have 
cost a billion dollars and a student can do it in a couple of days now for a hundred bucks. So as you know, Mark, and most people are, who are paying attention to genetics, it's, it's, a, it's a golden era. And so what we've engineered for the first time is a highly regulatable system. So we can turn on these genes um, at will just by feeding the mouse or in the case of clinical trials in humans, we should be able to give an antibiotic. The antibiotic is doxycycline, which you can take for a whole variety of reasons. If you go to Africa and you don't want to catch uh, diseases, you can take that. So it's very safe, but we don't use it to kill off bacteria. It's designed to turn on these genes. And, we, and the good thing about it is the, the way we're planning, and I haven't told you this, but let me tell you, we're planning in less than two years to start the first clinical trial in glaucoma, which most people will know is pressure induced damage to the retina. Our plan is to deliver those genes to the eye, prescribe a course, three week course of antibiotics, which will turn on the genes. You hopefully will get your vision back. In the case of the mice, they get their vision back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you stop taking the antibiotic and it should stay that way. You've reset the age of the cells. Now you'll still age back again, but we don't know how many times you can reset. We've done it once. Yeah. Interesting if you can do it a hundred times. Why glaucoma? Obviously, you know, I'm fascinated by this particular research of yours because I don't think there's been a lot of people that have been able to regenerate a nerve, you know, quite this way. So could you see it used for paralysis and other nerve types of damage or, you know, other things in the brain or whatnot? Why'd you choose this and how likely do you think it is to relate to other nerve issues? Oh, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it didn't work generally across the body and in, in human neurons generally. We've, we've tested it in human neurons. Um, it also prevents them from dying when damaged by a chemotherapeutic drug. Uh, we get the growth. I showed you those plates. I didn't have time, but we can get them to regrow as though they were young again. And those are human cells, right? Uh, this isn't mouse. So I think it's generalizable. I could be wrong, of course, but, but if I was to be a betting man, I would say it's a good chance that we will be able to reset uh, any aspect of the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that we didn't choose the eye for any good reason other than it was a good model for the central nervous system. And others have done the kidney and the skin, which are very different systems. I think this is a very fundamental cause of aging that, as I mentioned, is found in things like baker's yeast all the way through to humans. And we're tapping into something that is old as life itself. All right.